Our service continues on page 166. <coughs> o source of light and truth, creator of the eternal law of goodness and of the impulse within us for justice and mercy, we pray that this hour of worship may be one of vision and inspiration. Help us to find knowledge by which to live. Lead us to take the words we shall speak into our hearts and our lives. We rise for the call to worship. for the valor to face uncertainty, the courage to truly change what needs to be changed, and the faith to welcome the new spirit that is within, uniting us as one. So we sing the Shema together, page 170. Shema Yisrael Adonai Seated, we join together in the chanting of Ve'ahavta, the bottom of page 170. <laughs> Mitzavahayom <laughs> Uchetavtam <laughs> Lachem, Elohim, Adni Adonai, Elohim, You may have noticed that this room looks a little different than it did last year. And of course, it was time for the worn carpet to be changed, and those horrible red chairs, it was just time for them to go. But the intention of the designer in everything that was done here was to focus our atten attention more intensely on our beautiful, iconic ark and on the mosaic, the parting of the waters of the Red Sea that surrounds it. And that is appropriate, because those two moments are the stories of our people. Those moments are what make us who we are today as a people Israel. The escape from slavery to freedom leading us to Torah. And it's in that spirit of renewal that we, and of redemption, that we sing together the song of redemption on page 172. Oh, <laughs> 
Rat Israel, who for the Hino Mecha, you dove Israel, Galen, what a nice voce, more Israel, Top of page 174, <coughs> each generation has its path, each a vision of its own. Our mothers and fathers kindled light. A life unmarred by hate and war. Homage to the faithful who came before us. And bless the light that is ours to kindle. Honor to the generations of Israel, our people. All honor to those who illumine our paths. Remember us unto life, O sovereign who delights in life, and inscribe us in the book of life, O God of life.
Moser, Moshiach Magen, Baruch Atah Adonai, Magen Abraham Ezra Hatzarah. Great is the eternal power at the heart of life, mighty the love that is stronger than death. Life's harsh winds uproot the weak, its hard rains beat down upon our kin. Let those who stand support the falling, keep faith with those who lie in the dust. How good to redeem the ancient pledge for joy to blossom in arid soil. Please read with me at the bottom of page 176. Let us proclaim the sacred power of this day. It is awesome and full of dread. For on this day your dominion is exalted, your throne established in steadfast love. There in truth you reign. In truth you are judge and arbiter, counsel and witness. You write and you seal, you record and recount. You remember deeds long forgotten. You open the book of our days, and what is written there proclaims itself, for it bears the signature of every human being. The great shofar is sounded, the still small voice is heard. The angels, gripped by fear and trembling, declare in awe, this is the day of judgment, for even the hosts of heaven are judged as all who dwell on earth stand arrayed before you. As the shepherd seeks out the flock and makes the sheep pass under the staff, so do you muster and number and consider every soul, setting the bounds of every creature's life 
and decreeing its destiny. Repentance, prayer, and charity temper judgment's severe decree. This is your glory. You are slow to anger, ready to forgive. It is not the death of sinners you seek, but that they should turn from their ways and live until the last day you wait for them, welcoming them as soon as they turn to you. Our origin is dust, and dust is our end. Each of us is a shattered urn, grass that must wither, a flower that will fade, a shadow moving on, a cloud passing by, a particle of dust floating on the wind, a dream soon forgotten. Oh, oh, oh. 
As we are seated, we pray silently and call the Torah participants to the Bema at this time. Our Hagba this morning will be Eric Borman, and our Torah service will be led by Judge Barry Howard on page 120. In Chemocha, Velohim Adonai, Vein Kimatzacha, Malchut Cha, Malchut Kal Oimim. Continue with Avino Malkenu on page 121 together. Avino Malkenu, hear our voice. Avino Malkenu, we have sinned against you. Avino Malkenu, have compassion on us and on our children. Avino Malkenu, make an end to sickness, war, and famine. 
Avinu Malkenu, make an end to all oppression. Avinu Malkenu, inscribe us for blessing in the Book of Life. Avinu Malkenu, let the new year be a good year for us. Avinu Malkenu, fill our hands with blessing. Avinu Malkenu, be gracious and answer us, for we have little merit. Treat us generously and with kindness and be our help. The eternal, the eternal God is merciful and gracious, endlessly patient, loving and true, showing mercy to thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression and sin, and granting pardon.
Baruch Shenatan Torah La'amo Yisrael B'Kedushato. Blessed is the Lord who has given this Torah to our people Israel. And through Israel, it has been communicated to all humankind. Now on this Rosh Hashanah, this beginning of a new year as we are about to read from its sacred text, as has each year our ancestors before us, let us repeat together the watchword of our faith. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Our Torah will be blessed on this Rosh Hashanah morning by Larry August. The blessing can be found on page 124. And then the Torah will be read by Daron Levine, Josh Gadharf, and Marcy Schulman. Baruch Adonai Hamparach Leolam Va'ed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Halam Asher Bakarbanu Mikol Hamim V'natan Lanu Et Torah To Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Amen Vayehi Achar Hadvarim Ha'ele Veha Elohim Nisa Et Avraham Vayomer elav, Avraham, vayomer hineni. Vayomer kachna et bincha et yichidcha, asher ahavta et yitzchak 
ולך לך אל ארץ המוריה ואעלה הוא שם לעולה על אחד ההרים אשר אומר אליך וישכם אברהם בבוקר ויחבוש את חמורו ויקח את שני נעריו איתו ואת יצחק בנו ויבקה עצי עולה ויקום וילך אל המקום אשר אמר לו האלוהים ביום השלישי ויישא אברהם את עיניו ויה את המקום מרחוק ויאמר אברהם אל נעריו שבו לכם פה עם החמור ואני והנער נלכה עד כה ונשתחווה ונשובה אליכם ויקח אברהם את עצי העולה וישם על יצחק בנו ויקח בידו את האש ואת המאכלת וילכו שניהם יחדיו ויאמר יצחק אל אברהם אביו, ויאמר אבי, ויאמר הנני ואני, ויאמר הנה האש והעצים, ואהיה השא לעולה. ויאמר אברהם אלוהים יר אלוה השא לעולה בני וילכו שניהם יחדיו ויבואו אל המקום אשר אמר לו האלוהים ויבן שם אברהם את המצפה ויערוך את העצים ויעקוד את יצחק בנו וישם אותו על המזבח ממעל לעצים. וישלח אברהם את ידו, ויקח את המאכלת לשחוט את בנו. ויקרא אליו מלאך אדוני מן השמיים, ויאמר אברהם, אברהם, ויאמר הנני. ויאמר אל תשלח ידך אל הנער ואל תעש לו מאומה כי אתה ידעתי כי ירא אלוהים אתה ולא חסכת את בנך את יחידך ממני I saw Abraham at the end of the year 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 of the שם המקום ההוא, אדוני יראה, אשר יאמר היום, בהר אדוני יראה. ויקרא מלאך אדוני אל אברהם, שנית מן השמיים. ויאמר, בי נשבעתי נאום אדוני כי... אשר עשית את הדבר הזה, ולא חסכת את בנך את יחידך, כי בבריך אברכך, והרבע הרבה את שרך ככוכבי השמיים, וכחון אשר על 
Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu Torah, emet v'chaye olam natan betochenu, baruch atah Adonai noten ha-Torah. Amen. Please rise in honor of the Torah. thank our Torah readers, we now turn to the reading of the Haftarah on page 198. The Haftarah will be blessed by Eliza Foreman and read by Tom North. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar bin Vim Tobim Veratsa Vidibrahem Hana Marim Bemed Baruchata Adonai Habocher Batora Uv Moshe Avdo Uv Yisrael Amo Uvin Vie Hamet Bat Sedek. Seek the Eternal One while there is still time. Call out while God is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the sinful their thoughts. Let them return to the Eternal One who will show them compassion to our God who is quick to forgive. For my thoughts are not like yours, nor are your ways like mine, says the Eternal One. For high as the heavens above the earth, so are my, wa my ways high above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. Just as rain and snow come down from the sky without returning, but water the earth, making it blossom and bear fruit, yielding seed for sowing and bread to eat. So it is with my word comes from my mouth. It does not return to me unfulfilled without having accomplished my desire and achieved what I send it to do. For you shall go out in joy. You shall be led forth in peace before your mountains and hills shall break out in joyous song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Cypresses shall, shall grow instead of thorn bushes, myrtle instead of briar. These shall be a monument to God, an everlasting sign that will stand firm. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, sur kol haolamim, sadik bichol hadorot, ha'el ha'neeman, ha'omer v'yoseh, ha'midaber u'mekayem, Shekol divarav emet vat sedek al ha Torah va al ha avoda va al ha nevi 
Im ve'al yom hazikaron hazeh shenatata lanu Adonai Eloheinu lichavod ultifaret al hakol Adonai Eloheinu anachnu modim lach umevarchim otach yitbarach shimcha b'fi kol chay tamid liolam ba'ed Udvarchar emet v'kayam la'ad Baruch ata Adonai Melech kol ha'aretz Mekadesh Yisrael v'yom hazikaron And now we turn to the prayers, the special prayers for this day of Rosh Hashanah for this new year. And we call upon Susan Gordon and Sandy Faber. The prayers are found on page 218. And although not explicitly written into the lines, clearly on this Rosh Hashanah, this new year, we add in our hearts prayers for the victims of, of the Mexican earthquake. Uh, the, we send our prayers to the people of the Caribbean, of Florida, of Houston. All those prayers are just written between the lines, if you will, of our prayers for this day. Eternal God, we pray to you for the whole house of Israel scattered over the earth, yet bound together by a common history and united by a common heritage of faith and hope. Be with our brothers and sisters whose lives are made hard because they are Jews. Give them strength to endure and lead them soon from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light. Bless this holy congregation and all who serve it, together with all other holy congregations in all lands near and far. Uphold us, shield us, and bestow upon us abundant life and health and peace and happiness in all our dwelling places. Bring to fulfillment the blessings of Moses, the eternal your God, make you a thousand times as many as you are, and bless you as God has promised you. Amen. O oh God, send your healing to the sick, your comfort to all who are in pain or anxiety, your tender love to the sorrowing hearts among us. Be their refuge through their time of trial as they pass from weakness to strength, from suffering to consolation, from lonely fear to the courage of faith. Amen. We pray for all who hold positions of leadership and responsibility in our national life. Let your blessing rest upon them and make them responsive to your will so that our nation may be to the world an example of justice and compassion. Deepen our love for our country and our desire to serve it. Strengthen our power of self-sacrifice for our nation's welfare. Teach us to uphold its good name by our own right conduct. Cause us to see clearly that the well-being of our nation is in the hands of all its citizens. Imbue us with zeal for the cause of liberty in our own land and in all lands. And help us always to keep our homes safe from affliction, strife, and war. Amen. We pray for the land of Israel and its people. May its borders know peace, its inhabitants tranquility. And may the bonds of faith and fate, which unite the Jews of all lands, be a source of strength to Israel and to us all. God of all lands and ages, answer our constant prayer with a Zion once more aglow with light for us and for all the world, and let us say, Amen. We call Justin Applefield to the Bema, who will be sh blowing the shofar to uh, call in our new year as we rise now for the returning of the Torah to the Ark. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, so that we may exalt God's name together. God
Remain standing as we turn to page 211 for the service of the sounding of the shofar. Well, yes, everyone can see him. Tequia Shevarim Tequia Tequia Terua Tequia Page 213. Your love is everlasting to those who revere you. Your righteousness continues to children's children, to those who keep your covenant, who remember your commandments and do them. I remember your kindnesses, Lord, your great goodness to the house of Israel. The Lord your God is a God of compassion, who will not forget the sworn covenant with your fathers and mothers. I remember your ordinances from all. I, am I will meditate on your precepts and keep your ways before my eyes. I will find in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Justice, justice shall you follow, that you may live.
Together, Baruch Ata Aronai Zocher Habrit. Blessed is the eternal God who remembers the covenant. Shevarim Terua Tekia Tekia Shevarim Tekia Tekia Terua Tekia Arrested Sepotemu, Ram 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 Israel stood at Sinai and heard the voice of the shofar. There our people entered into your covenant to be your witness to the world. From there they went forth to proclaim the laws by which the free may live and the enslaved find hope. That covenant we renew when we hear the sound of the shofar. Together, from that day to this, have we a people acquainted with miracle and disaster encountered you again and again on the path of our life. And you are present, O Eternal One, not on peaks of vision alone. At any moment we may turn and find you. The whisper of a thought, the most humble touch of being, may lead us to you. So endlessly reveal amid your concealments, you stand awaiting our search to lead us with many a fall upward to heights we tremble to climb. All this we hear when the voice of the shofar, stranger among sounds, is heard. And that shofar sound heralds yet another day whose promise is our hope. Then shall begin the time of peace of which we dream. A world of truth shall be revealed to us. And together we shall rejoice in the kingdom of God. Distant the goal, at times it fades from sight, for we are free, free to love, free to build the kingdom, free to hate, free to tear it down. And yet the dream is not forgotten, the vision does not fail, it is the meaning of our lives. Come what may, we shall hold fast to it, and even when the hope seems lost, we shall say, the kingdom of heaven could begin today, if we would but hearken to God's voice. On that day, the great shofar shall be sounded. You shall cause the shofar to be sounded and proclaim liberty throughout the earth to all its inhabitants. Happy is the people that knows the joyful sound. And it shall be said on that day, this is our God from whom we wait, whose deliverance we await in hope. This is the eternal one for whom we have waited, in whose deliverance we shall rejoice and be glad. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall be made level, and the rough places a plain. <coughs> Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth, sing aloud, shout praise. With trumpet sound, the shofar blast, proclaim the sovereign God.
together. Baruch Ata Adonai, Shomea Kol Truat Amo Yisrael, Barachamim. We praise you, the merciful God, who hearkens to the sound of the shofar. Shivarim Terua Takia Takia Shivarim Takia Takia Terua Takia Gedola picture. What do you see? It looks like a mom and her little girl sitting together on the couch. Maybe it's a weekend, maybe they're relaxing after a long day of school and work. But they look comfortable, snuggled together, each of them looking down at their empty hands where mom's smartphone and her daughter's tablet would be. So this photo went around my Facebook feed with a slew of others, couples sitting together, both staring vacantly at their hands, a family at the dinner table, friends on a boat, all just staring at their palms, facing away from each other. Now, these photos are part of a project called Removed, where the artist photoshops the phones out of people's hands to make a point. That we are so distracted by our devices that we often forget about who is really right in front of us. Now, we love our phones. We sleep with them, we eat with them, we carry them in our pockets. We check them on average 47 times a day. 82 times if you are between the ages of 18 and 24. And we love them for good reason. They tell us the weather, the time of day, and the number of steps we've taken. They find us dates, entertain us with music and Netflix, and answer all our questions. They quell feelings of loneliness and anxiety. And maybe you've even ordered the new iPhone 10 coming out on October 27th, so you can unlock it with your face and impress all your friends. But these images are pretty upsetting to me. I've always been sensitive to friends and family using their phones while we're out to dinner or watching a movie together, but I know that I'm often just as guilty and I see myself in these pictures. And maybe some of you do too. Because we all know what it feels like to have to compete with a machine for attention. And yet, look at the picture again. How many of you are dying, just dying to take out your phones right now and check them? <laughs> There could be a phantom buzz in your pocket, but maybe it's just become second nature to have it out in front of you, on your desk, on your table, on your sofa, in your lap. You know you shouldn't. It's Rosh Hashanah, come on, you can make it for an hour and a half, but you feel the itch. We all know that technology can be destructive. It can remove us from real life, from real people. 
And yet, today, I want to show you how amazing it can be. How it can help replace those empty spaces with depth and connection and meaning. I have an amazing group of women in my life. There are about a hundred of us. Writers and professors, nannies and executives, stay-at-home moms and even a ferry boat captain. We found each other about 13 years ago on a message board for women planning their weddings. And we talked about our rings, our dresses, our fiancés, but after all of us got married, we had become more than just an online forum. We just kept going. And through the years, we've supported each other through children and divorce and loss and mental illness, confiding in each other the way that close friends do, despite the hundreds and thousands of miles between us. Now, I don't talk about this group very often because it feels silly to say it out loud that some of my closest friends are women that I've never met. But it's true. We've built this vibrant, supportive, caring community through technology. And I want to introduce you to one of them. This is Sarah. Now, I asked Sarah to share with me, to share with you, what this online community means to her. And she writes, through three grueling years of fertility treatments, through miscarriages, and finally through our decision to pursue adoption, this group of women was here for me. They shared our adoption page, they spread our message, and once we finally matched, they collected several thousand dollars toward the adoption fees that they knew we couldn't afford. Every single day, I am grateful for these women and this group. They're even helping me pick a name. They're sending blankets and cards and hand-me-downs, and the day I found them was one of the luckiest days of my life because they are my tribe. There's Tiki, battling cancer in Portland. There's Judy, expecting a baby in a few months, and Pam, who lost her husband suddenly last year. There's Jessica, thinking about switching jobs, and Crystal, whose son was just diagnosed with autism. We were strangers, just anonymous strangers, and now we're family, and we went beyond the screen, and we are anything but removed from one another. How many of you out there speak to your children, your grandchildren, your siblings, your bubby, via FaceTime or Skype? So my parents and siblings live 500 miles away. And FaceTime has changed our lives, given my kids the opportunity to spend so much more time with their grandparents. My son calls my mom to show her the scrape he got on his knee at school. And my daughter calls my dad to kiss him goodnight and smushes her tiny little lips up against that screen. Our devices are lifelines to people that matter most to us. In this world where families no longer live their whole lives in one place, where friends are spread out all over the world. And these interactions, these communities, are incredibly valuable. They are real. And I, for one, thank God every day that we have these tools at our disposal. And I thank God every day for a different tool, our Torah, the original high-tech connector bringing Jews together as we were dispersed all over the planet. And despite differences in language and country and culture and history, we were given this incredible gift, the gift of Kalal Yisrael, to be the people of Israel. And as we celebrate Rosh Hashanah tonight, today, let us not forget what it is about the Torah that is so powerful, so integral to who we are. It is the stories. It's the humanity, the values that we draw from the very human interactions of those who came before us. Rabbi Danny Gordis writes that the truth about spirituality is that it is found in every single human interaction at any moment. That it is relationships between people that help us connect to God. And that human life, when shared with others, is truly our most godly experience. And I believe him. Our tradition is rich with narrative, the stories of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, of Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. They're people, and God is with them as they navigate life together. They are brave and they are sad. They are strong and they are weak. They make smart choices and really terrible choices. And we know that they are just people like we are. 
Stories have power. And just as our Torah transcends time and space, connecting Jews throughout the world and throughout millennia, technology helps us do the same thing today. And Humans of New York does just that. This social media enigma was started on Facebook by a man named Brandon Stanton after he was fired from his job as a bonds trader. Instead of updating his resume, he decided to take a risk and do something he truly enjoyed, taking street portraits. He asked strangers to tell their story, to speak their truths, and he shares them with the world. One example. Right after I lost vision in my eye, I was so bad at walking that I ran into a girl eating ice cream and knocked her cone out of her hand. She screamed, are you blind? And I turned to her and said, well, I, I am blind, actually. I'm so sorry. I'll buy you a new cone. And she said, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Don't worry, it's no problem at all. I'll buy another one. So we walked into the ice cream store together, and the clerk said, I heard the whole thing. Ice cream is free. <laughs> the quotes are sometimes heartbreaking. They're sometimes funny. They're sometimes uplifting. They're sometimes hard to read. But they're always real. They're always meaningful. And the reason that they're so popular with more than 7 million followers is that in a world where we are so often isolated and lonely and living in our own bubbles, the photos help us reconnect to humanity, to see each other, to really see each other. Stanton has helped raise millions of dollars for refugees by sharing their stories. His followers have helped hundreds of people around the world desperately in need of media attention or money or aid. But more than that, he has done something astonishing. He has harnessed the power of technology for the good of the world. Because people are seeing strangers in a different way. When they walk down the street instead of lowering their eyes, when sitting in a doctor's office or on a plane, slowing down and asking themselves what makes him hurt, what makes her happy, what keeps them up at night. And we are a strong community here at Temple Israel. We're here for each other in times of joy and sorrow. We study together, we pray together, we sing together, we travel together. But you've all seen the parking lot on the high holidays. There are a lot of us here. And it's often easier to chat with the people we know than to get to know the people we don't. But if we believe in the holiness of relationship, which we do, and if we believe in the power of community, which we do, and if we believe that technology can help us see each other and love each other in a profound way, which we do, then it's time for us to embrace the new year by embracing each other's stories. And so I give you humans of Temple Israel. This is Jake. I worry a lot about my future. I've been working so hard for so long for this one thing, and I don't know if I'll be able to reach my goals. My parents went to Michigan. Both of my siblings went to Michigan, which is so annoying. <laughs> I know it's not the end of the world if I don't get in, but it sure feels that way. This is Cindy. Once the tragedy has passed, once you get back to some state of normalcy, what do you do with it? You just survive this terribly difficult thing, but then what? Do you allow it to turn you bitter? Or do you take it as a lesson and help others through their own struggles? We chose the latter. We live our lives to honor our three and a half year old son Stevie's memory, and we try anyway. This is the Ostroff family. Leaving my family, my home, everything I knew was hard. But seeing our children happy here, that's what makes the move from Israel worth it. They have friends, they have their own lives, and it feels good that we've made the transition easier for them. They still remember Israel, but they're doing great here. And this new baby will be our first one without an Israeli accent. <laughs> this is Yetta and Isaac. Giving up our beautiful home has been challenging. We loved it, this lovely colonial. But there became a time when we just couldn't stay. The steps, you know, and the bedrooms upstairs. There were a lot of memories in that house. 
We raised our family in that house. We had my racing skis on the wall in that house. The skis did not come with us to the apartment. This is also Isaac. I've had many moments in my life, good moments, bad moments. Sometimes moments aren't good or bad, they're just lucky. I was approached by a total stranger in Dachau who gave me a handful of sugar. He asked me to give half to John, but I didn't know any John. And at the time, I was recovering from typhus, and the body needs nourishment. So I kept the sugar, and it saved my life. Everyone has a story, everyone. And Rosh Hashanah is the perfect time of year to open our eyes to those around us. Yes to our family, yes to our friends, but in 2017, in 5778, our world could use a little more kindness and understanding between people. So in that spirit, this year, we began with Jake and Cindy and the Ostroff family and Yetta and Isaac. And we'll continue our Humans of Temple Israel project on our social media pages with the hope that we will build stronger bonds here at home. And I hope that each of you will take part in this sacred project. And I have to tell you, sitting down with our people was one of the most inspiring experiences I've had here at Temple. And I hope you leave inspired too. Inspired to share your stories, to open your eyes and ears to those around you. So may we embrace this fresh new space, this fresh new moment, and this fresh new year, using our technology to connect to each other instead of removing ourselves from each other. May we be present for those we love, in person or via FaceTime, and value each other's humanity each and every day. Shana Tova. second, every minute, every hour, every day, everything, everyone, every place, every way, where you walk, where you stand, where you love, where you praise, all of it is holy ground, every he, every she, everyone, every who, it's in her, it's in it's in them, it's in you, in the bitter, in the sweet, in the calm, in the storm, all of life is holy ground.
continue now on page 222. I should add, if you'd like to hear more of these stories of the humans of Temple Israel, I would encourage you to come to Mincha Moments on the afternoon of Yom Kippur, when three other Temple members will be sharing their truly heartwarming and touching stories with us. Also, um, in terms of helping people in this world, uh, please remember that you can take a bag for Yad Ezra as you go out and uh, bring it back next week, and uh, we will share that food with the hungry. In any case, on page 222, we rise now for the adoration. Standing as we turn now to page 223, and we remember those whom we have loved and lost. Life and death alike are mysteries. We journey through a country dimly seen by the uncertain light of thought and feeling, and death is undiscovered territory, a land without report. Yet as we now remember our loved ones who have died, we look ahead with faith and hope. They have faded from our sight, but they live on in God's presence, where nothing good can perish. In the eternal, all beauty shines forever. As we turn from thoughts of death to task of life, may we, like those who came before us, be builders of God's dominion, a world of justice and joy. Yitgadal v'yitgadash mei rabah, v'yama divra chirutei v'yam lich malchutei, Amen.